In Activity 12, Field Trip to a Pond, students take a field trip to a local pond or lake and observe plants and animals in their natural environment. They observe and record the plants and animals that live in and near the pond or lake, and finally look for signs of pollution in and around the water. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 12, Parts A and B, Dip Net, Plastic Dishes, Magnifiers, and the OBIS Pond Guide. You will also need to provide collecting containers, crayons, white paper, plastic garbage bags, first aid kit, insect repellent, and paper towels. To prepare for session one, obtain permission and arrange for students to attend the field trip. Begin acquiring clear plastic bowls and jars with lids to collect plant and animal specimens. To begin session one, the day before the activity, tell students that they are going to take a class field trip to a nearby pond or lake. Ask students, what kinds of things do you think we will see at the pond? Students may mention some of the more common plants and animals found in your region. As a class, discuss what materials are necessary for the trip, such as proper clothing, materials for collecting plants and animals, a first aid kit, insect repellent, and so on. Next, discuss safety rules for the trip. Caution students about other harmful plants and animals that may be found at the site, such as bees and poison ivy. Discuss the importance of wearing long sleeves and pants and old but sturdy shoes for the trip. And finally, emphasize the importance of staying with the group. You may wish to have students wear protective gloves when collecting specimens. Remind students that animals should not be picked up with bare hands, but with a dip net or a collecting container. Also remind students that any water animals they collect should be placed in a container of pond water. Finally, tell students that the site is to remain as it is found. No plants or animals are to be taken from the site and no litter should be left behind. To prepare for session two, make a copy of activity sheet 12, parts A and B for each student. Each team of four will need one dip net, one plastic dish, one or two collecting containers, two magnifiers, some crayons, some paper, and access to the field guides. Have a first aid kit, insect repellent, and paper towels on hand. To begin session two, remind students of the safety procedures and take the students to the site. Once there, point out harmful plants or areas you want students to avoid. Then, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 12, Part A to each student. Have students write the date and the name of the pond they are visiting on the top of the sheet. Divide the class into teams of four and distribute the materials. Next, allow students to begin observing their surroundings. First, ask students, is the water still or is it moving? The water in ponds should be still. In larger lakes, the wind may cause the water to lap gently at the shore, but the water is generally still. Then, instruct students to draw pictures of what they see on their activity sheets. Plants should be recorded in the first column, animals should be recorded in the second column, and non-living things should be recorded in the third column. Next, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 12, Part B, to each student, and ask them to stand at the water's edge. Ask students, what do you notice about the bottom of the pond? Elicit that the bottom of the pond slopes. It is shallow near the shore and gets deeper toward the middle of the pond. Instruct students to look for plants and animals that live in the shallow water and have them record their observations on the activity sheet. Then have students observe and record the non-living things they see in the water. Ask students if they've seen any evidence of pollution, such as litter, in the water or along the shore. Inform students that pollution is left behind by people. Next, point out any pond scum that may be on the surface of the water and ask students, what is pond scum made of? Students may recall from Activity 6 that pond scum is made of plankton, which is algae and tiny water animals. Then ask, is pond scum good for the pond? Explain that pond scum is not really good. Fertilizers and some detergents contain phosphates and nitrates that cause algae to grow rapidly. If the algae grows faster than it can be eaten by animals, it will eventually cover the entire pond. As it decomposes, it uses up the oxygen in the water, causing the animals to suffocate. To conclude session two, when students have finished recording their observations, ask them to return any specimens they've collected to the area it was taken from. Collect the activity sheets, pack up the materials, and return to the classroom. 
To prepare for session three, each student will need his or her copy of Activity Sheet 12, parts A and B. To begin session three, back in the classroom, return students' copies of Activity Sheet 12, parts A and B. Let students share with their classmates some of the observations they made on the trip. Ask students, how is a pond like our aquariums? Students should make comparisons such as both a pond and an aquarium contain fresh water. A pond is home to plants and animals that live in or near water. Both a pond and the aquariums contain snails, fish, plants, and sand. And the sand in the aquarium slopes just like the bottom of a pond. Then ask students, how is a pond different from the aquariums? Students may understand that a pond is much bigger, contains many more kinds of plants and animals. The fish in the aquariums need to be fed fish food, while the fish in a pond can find plenty to eat on their own. And finally, a pond is a natural ecosystem, which means that it exists with or without people, while an aquarium is an artificial ecosystem, which means that it needs to be maintained by people. To conclude this activity, have students help you wash and rinse the materials that were used to capture and examine specimens during the field trip. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.